Alrighty, saints. We're getting ready to get started, cranked up here. So, guys, get your mind set, get your heart set. Get your heart set, your mind set, call a friend, call a loved one. But most of all, get your mind together, ready to receive a word from God. Live in a spirit of expectation, people. Live in a spirit of expectation. I expect God to do something, but you got to give God something to work with. So be willing to give him your mind. We have about two minutes, guys, before we get started here. So please, if you will, please, I beg you, call a friend, call a loved one, call someone that's close to you and just say, hey, this preacher is back on. Give him 40, 45 minutes max of your time, and I promise you, I believe you will be blessed, guys. I believe you will be blessed. So get your mind up. Get your heart geared up. Get your mind geared up that we are getting ready to move forward in what God has given us um, via the Word of God. So um, grab your Bibles, grab your app, Bible um, pads, notepads, whatever you're going to be using, phones, whatever you're going to use today to do Bible study with us. And get with me, guys. Let's go to the book of Acts. Let me remove the church here so that we may be able to stay focused. Y'all know how this preacher is right here. He will take off in a minute and go squirrel on you. So, if you would, saints, go with me to Acts, the 28th chapter. We're coming to the end of the book of Acts, guys. And we're getting ready to... um. And coming to the end of the book of Acts, we're finding some things that Paul have been going through in his journey through the book of Acts that will be very beneficial for both you and I, that we can learn things on um, how God works. Although that was a different time that he was in, the same principles today work. So if you work the principles that God set before you, the principles that God set before you will work. But what we have to do, guys, is anytime we're getting ready to deal with the word of God, Understand, we're going from the natural into the spiritual. So what we want to do is let's pray and cry out to God that he may put our spiritual eyes on, that we may have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say and see how God is moving with us when it comes to Bible study. If you will, let's go before the throne of grace via prayer. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for who you are and for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to the end of yet another day, Lord, but yet the time we have set aside just for you. When we have taken on the task of the day and all of the things that we have to do, Lord, we have set this time aside, wholly set aside to hear from you. So, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus right now. I pray, Lord, that you bless the saints, that our minds may stay clear, focused on that which you called us to do. Help us to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says unto the church, that we will not miss it because everything you say to us is for us and will benefit us, Lord. So, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus right now that you bless us, that we may stay focused in the moment. For three groups of people I choose to pray for right now, Lord, to those that are right here right now, I pray, Lord, that we stay locked in to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Remove any distractions that may be set before us. Help us, Lord God, to wholly set aside this time just for you, Father. That is to hear the Spirit speak to us for the things that are benefit to us, Lord, that we may be able to grow. For those that are in route to get um, in route, Lord, to Bible study, be it, Lord God, over the website, Lord, I pray that you bless them, that they're able to get to a safe place, that they may not be trying to do two things at one time to put themselves in danger, but that they may get to a safe place and be able to stop to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to them. And to those, Lord, for whatever reason that will not be here with us, Lord, I pray that you put it on their hearts and it burns in them, Lord, to find out exactly what Bible study was tonight, that they may rehearse this message, Lord God, and be able to think on the things that you have set before them and be able to grow in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. So with that said, Lord, by my own free will, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over this message right now. Bless him that he may stay focused, that we may stay focused to hear him and grow according to your word. Now, for doing this for us, Lord, we're so careful to give your name to praise, for this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior, for you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, if you're in agreement with that prayer, saints, um, signified by saying amen. Now, what we're doing, guys, we are going through the book of Acts, and we're at the end part of this, guys. And if you have been studying with us and going through this with us, we have saw a lot of um, things that God has done. We have seen some amazing things that Paul has found himself into. 
and a lot of things that has fallen and has fallen on Paul. But this is one thing we know the word of God tells us as we are going through this journey. And I wanted you to vicariously live through Paul's eyes, meaning all these things that he have gone through, something similar in life that you have been facing and going through, maybe not um, that dramatic but similar that you are going through, we want you to be able to take those things and see how God has blessed you tremendously, okay? So what we want to do is go back as our popular, you know how it go, guys, our popular slingshot effect, which we will go back and study. Now, last time we, we covered from Acts, the 28th chapter, verses 4 through 7. Uh, again, we're not worried about the quantity. We're all about the quality. So if the Holy Spirit decided to keep us on one verse, we will chew on that one verse until we get all of the nutrients out of that one, and then we'll move on to the next one. It makes no sense for me to run fast to see how much I can cover when you haven't learned about what we talked about. I would rather you be informed than you to be um, entertained. So... What we studied with, guys, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to read this and then we're going to touch on them and then we're going to move forward with new stuff, okay? So what we have here in Acts, the 28th chapter, in verse number four, we was reading and it says, And when the barbarous people saw the venomous beast hanging on his, hanging on his hand, they said amongst themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered him not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit, they looked, they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But afterwards, they had looked a great while. They saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters was, was possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And so what we had, um, a few things that we had touched on, guys, and um, as we was going through and beginning to hammer at these verses, just for your hearing, um, things that we just wanted you to know. We said, people don't know your, um, people don't know your, um, people don't know your story will make an assumption about you. So that's one thing that we were beginning to tell you. You know, when people, when they begin to watch Paul and they saw this beast bite him because he's just going through, it's a pretty rough day that Paul was going through. He had a rough day. He just got off a shipwreck, um, shipwreck that could have easily cost him his life. He made it to shore. Instead of sitting around, Paul getting busy and trying to get a fire immediately to take care of the, uh, make sure the people, because it was cold, uh, make sure the people were warm and to keep himself warm because he didn't want to go to hypothermia. And because of that, doing some work, a snake bit him. And so the people there watching him assume this man have to be a murderer. I mean, he just escaped death there and death don't came back to get him. So people that don't know your story will make assumptions about you. It's okay. You just got to keep living and honoring God. And then we pointed out, guys, we say it's, um, um, when you are doing God's will, God will, God will um, take care of you. And so the thing is, Paul was about the business of God, meaning um, making the fire. And you say, God didn't tell them to make a fire, but it's common sense. If people have a need and you see their need, you don't have to wait to God say, take care of their need. God tells you to do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. So when you see people with a need, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. So Paul was about God's business, meaning the people had a need. There was a fire. Um, they needed um, heat. And so he immediately got the fire going. And there, the venomous snake bit him because of he was doing a service. And then we were saying, guys, in um, verse number six, we was bringing it in. We said, um, um, okay, we were saying, don't steal God's praises. So when they was looking at him, after a while they did all this judging about him, then they begin to watch him and say, no, he was a God. And we told you, and a thing that I want to make sure we understand is God, uh, I was telling you guys last week, God has a throne that's set up for one. And no one sits on his lap. Meaning God is not going to share his glory with no one. God is a jealous God. A jealous God. And so, um, I told you guys of the fast that I have firm foundation on. And that spiritual fast is we will not steal. We will not borrow. We will not lust 
after the Lord's praises. They are heals and heals alone. And so when God do a great thing through you and people try to exalt you, no, you give God his praise, not with a false humility, but God's with all humbleness. Let them know, but for God, but for the grace of God, there go I. Or I had no idea. I prayed, guys, I'm telling you, I was scared. I was nervous. I prayed and I asked God and he delivered me. So all praises go to him because I had no idea what I was doing. You got to give God his praises and make sure he have them alone. Because when God blesses you and you take and steal his praises, what is it most likely that God will do this for you again? And the reason is God is trying to say to you, you're not spiritually mature enough to do that. Now, when you steal God's praises, you're in a dangerous position. Because anytime you steal the praises of God, God is coming after those. He wants his praises. That's what God loves. He adores being praised. So when you give God the praise, God comes closer to you. But he loves to be praised. But when you are one that's still in God's praises, God's going to deal with you. So don't let that ever be a part with you. And we summed it up, guys. And we were just saying, um, last part, we were saying, people have to get to know you. And that's what we were saying in verse number seven. Listen, that's what he's talking about there with Publius. Again, he says, in the same quarters was possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius, who received who received us, enlarged us three days courteously. Now, one thing we was talking about, guys, and really beginning to deal with here is you have to understand, regardless of what a person's rank is, some people get starstruck when they see certain people. They get starstruck when they're around um, or when they are intimidated when they're around certain things. But God has already laid out before you. It doesn't matter. They was with the chief person of the island. So the, the number one, top dog, they was with him. And so what did Paul do in a situation like that? Well, Paul always does. He proclaims the word of God. He proclaims the word of God. And so that's what he's saying. Um, people have to uh, people have to get to know you. And so how do we get to know him? He lodged with them three days. It's impossible for you um, not to know a person after three days of being with them. Because remember, these are strangers. And when you have a stranger, you could tell, have you ever been in the presence of a person or you come in the presence with people and you just begin to observe the people you're around? You have that one person that will not stop talking and you don't even know the person, but you're like, oh, Lord, I hope I'm not with this dude. He talk oh, that knows everything about everything. Those type people, uh, my mother-in-law used to call them a El Nora. They know everything. And so these are the things that you're looking at. So when you're spending some time with the people um, after three days, you're going to get to know the people and know their heart, guys. And so those are the things that we was beginning to deal with and we was beginning to go forward with. So now what we want to do is take the word of God and go forward with it from there. OK, so in verse number eight, we're going to start there. OK, and so in verse number eight, number eight. So again, Paul has gotten to know um, in verse number seven, he has gotten to know Publius because he has spent three days with him. Now, this guy has opened up his door. And there's something very important. Thank you, Lord, that you need to understand. You should always bless people and do unto others as you have them to do unto you. Because, again, I want to show you something here in verse number seven, because it is key. It is very key that you notice this again. He says in the same quarters were um, possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius. Now, I say it to you, people really act like their leader. And because we found out, we went back to verse number two, where the people began to come to them and serve them because it was cold and they saw them in a bad situation. So the people came out to serve them in any way form. Well, you can see why the people was very um, hospitable, if you will, because their, um, their leader was. Again, if you have jacked up leaders, they'll do some jacked up teaching and you'll end up with jacked up people. But if you have a godly minded leader, he's going to do the godly minded teaching and then the people will have a godly mind. But the problem you have is so many leaders have their own agenda and it's all about exalting them as opposed to exalting the Lord. And so you have a lot of arrogant or if you would, people that are running around that's very prideful, puffed up. Why? Because they learned it from their leader. And so this is what you're finding here. Publius, Publius was beginning to serve the people with all of his heart for three days. Courteously, he took care of the needs of Paul and them. And that's very important. Remember this. He didn't know them from Adam. They just wrecked on the island. And so the people covered them. Word came to, I guess, would be the, the leader of the island. And he in, um, invited the people in. He didn't go through the people's record. Because remember, the people thought Paul was a murderer. 
That's why death was trying to catch him. That's what they thought. So because Publius was that way and, and wanted to serve, because of that, God blessed him tremendously. So you should always have a God heart and God mind because you never know who God is going to link you with. And when you're doing your own thing, you will get your own results. But when you love the Lord and do the God thing, you'll get the God results. And God have already said what his results is. He said, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospered. So when you do the thing to honor God and obey God, God will then position you to come in contact with people. People that can connect with you to take you where God wants you to go. Here's the thing. Many people don't take the time and they are so afraid or want to people please that they'll get out of the will of God and afraid to call call a situation what it is because you want to be in right standing with people and not in right standing with God. But I'm going to show you this now. That's number seven. Now, remember, probably this sold. And so God says you're going to reap. Verse number eight. He says, and it came to pass that the father of Publius lied sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid hands on him and healed him. Do you see what is taking place now? Because Paul got to know Publius and got to and saw that he was a gentle man with a good heart. Paul did says, listening to his story, because they had to have conversation, came to find out that his father was sick. Well, Publius had something to offer Paul them, being shipwrecked and without food and things of that sort. He gave them warmth and cover. And so Paul says, because I know the creator and the God of the universe, I want to pray for your father that he may be healed and come out of what he is in. Since you got to understand um, or you need to understand who it is that you come in contact with. I told you the word of God says, be careful who you entertain for, you know, not when you entertain angels unaware. So you're not sure who are you dealing with. So you should treat everybody with the utmost respect. Don't assume because the people assume with Paul. And but as they watched him longer, that changed their assumptions. And so that's what you had right here, saints. You had this, that his father, because, because he was so, um, because he was so courteous, courtesy came back to him. Be not deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever one soweth, that shall they also reap. And so God is saying to you, you should uh, always sow with the heart of something that you may want to receive. Not for the purpose of that you want to receive it. But I'm saying you should sow with a good heart towards people because you want people to have a good heart towards you. You never know that very thing that you are suffering with, that very thing that is that barrier to you, that very thing that you can't get around, that very thing that you are trying to fix. God may let a shipwrecked person come into your life and they have the answer to fix that very thing that you are struggling with. So the thing is you should always have the heart to serve people. You should always have the heart to do that, which is right. Because sometimes the very people who gossip about you will be the ones who need you. That's what you have to understand. Sometimes the very people that did all of the gossiping about you, remember when he landed on the island and they didn't know nothing about him. They watched him and the snake bit him and they assumed that death is trying to get him because he's a murderer, but they begin to watch him closely. There's going to be some people that they're going to hear a word about you or somebody, um, the hater, going to say something about you or spread the rumor about you. Let me tell you something. If the devil ain't lying on you, you're not doing much for God. If the devil's not coming after you or messing with you, that's because you ain't messing with him. And you say, well, I'm okay with that, but that's not a good thing. Because if the devil don't mess with you, then God will. Now, who do you want to mess with you, God or the devil? Because in this battle or in this race that you're in, you're going to offend someone. So either you're going to offend God or you're going to offend the devil. Now, who do you want to offend? Now, what are you finding out here is... These very people that watched him and they gossip because remember the Bible said they said one to another. Again, let's look at it. Um, verse number, I think it was verse number two. No. Verse number. We got it. We got it. 
I'm gathering bones. Okay, in verse number four, and it says, and the barbarians people, the barbar, the barbarous people saw the venomous beast hanging on his hands and said amongst themselves. So that lets you know they was doing a gossip thing. They're, they're looking at this and they're gossiping. So there are people um, that will click together and because one have a bad thing to say about you, the others will go along with that. But it's okay. You just keep living. You just keep living because we'll find out when those things take place. Um, those same people that laughed and picked at you will be the ones that need you to get them out of or need you to help them from. Or you may be that person that laughed or picked at a person not knowing that that person may be the very one that's going to help you. You just can't say, guys, you cannot say how God decide to use a person. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a person so many times in this world, the world give you an image that you want to accept. Now, let me say this for whoever it is that I'm talking to. Uh, maybe you're a person and you are uh, expecting God for a companion. And you are looking and you already have in your mind what this companion would look like or what this a companion would possess. But when you see a person, you just throw them out of the thinking. You have no idea. Do you not know, um, I don't know how true it is, but it has been said, if you, you can check it out, except Google it, it said the number one vehicle of the rich people, when you look at all of them, of course they have all kinds of fancy vehicles and stuff, but the number one vehicle for a rich person, they said is a Ford F-150, because they're about the business of doing work. So you may see a person, you may want to see a person driving in this exotic or this luxury vehicle. But what happens if they come in an old Ford F-150? Don't tell God how to be God. And so these people, you find out because um, Paul, they received Paul and Paul got to know them. Paul had an answer for a problem. Now, tell me what you think was more the hospitality that Publius gave unto Paul and his friends to Paul knew or the joy that Publius felt when his father was laying there of a bloody flux. That means he had a stomach problem. There was a stomach problem and he was spitting up blood. So there was something going on internally and Paul was there and prayed for him and healed him, which then comes back to me. And I'm going to speak to me now, guys. And it may also apply to you. But I believe we serve the same God that Paul served. I believe God can do the same things that he did back with Paul. And so I often ask myself, what is the difference with Paul and myself? When do I get to see the miracles of people, people that are on death door and God healed them and get them up? People, wouldn't you love to see it? a person that is blind and God healed them? A person that is deaf and God blesses them where they can talk? Lame, and God blesses them where they can walk. As we said, blind, and God opened their eyes. Now, my question would be, if God used your hands to do such a thing, and people start running to you, asking you to heal them, will you give God the glory, the praise, and the honor, and say, it is not me, but the God that worked it through me? Or would you say, yes, I want you to write a book about how I first healed the first person? What is your agenda and goal? It's very important. And so you find out probably his father was sick, but because he was good to Paul and them, not knowing who he had, but still he honored and loved them and respected him with like anyone else because of what he did as a good thing. It blessed his father. You never know. Like I said, you may do a good thing and it bless loved ones. Your goodness may be the very thing to bless someone else because God sometimes will take and say, you know what? Um, there are certain people that may look and say, I don't know you, but you know such and such. Now, one thing my wife does and I do all the time with Firm Foundation, we always say we love, we love the saints. We definitely love the saints and we pray for you guys. We do. We're praying for you guys always. Uh, something going on with the saints, we want to pray for you immediately. Now, one thing we will say though, we understand that the saints have a growing process, all of them. Do you not know what you do? People associate what you do to Firm Foundation. 
So when you are acting a crazy mess, you know the first thing they're going to say? That's, that's a member of Firm Foundation. They pass the preach all of this, but look, he can't even get to them. So you have to understand we are forever linked. We're linked in. So that's why it will behoove you to honor God and do your best because you never know who's watching you. You never know who's watching you because people will say when they find out what church you're at, if they know it, they say, well, I've heard of that church. Wait a minute. I ain't know they, they say exactly like that. Or they would say, well, I know that pastor. I know that man. He is real. So you say you, you that's your pastor, but people don't know where you are. There's years that God has been molding and making me, and I have a long way to go, but God has brought me from a very long way. The same thing with you. So if you take in the word of God and honor God, it may just be the door that opens for someone. Hey, I don't know who it is. If the car get in front of you, allow him. It's okay. We're still going to get there. And I preach to me these things too. Yes, you get frustrated. We're human. We're human. But you can't stop this thing from coming at you, but you can say how you're going to deal with, meaning frustration, anxiety, these things. You can't stop them from coming at you, but you can determine how you want to deal with them. Okay? So you'll find that that's what he said there. So in verse number nine, it says, so now after he did this and dealt with that, remember, so in verse number nine, so when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. So it just didn't stop them. Word began to spread all out. It wasn't about, you know, just Paul, the people are coming to this man that's doing the healing, but it's Paul's responsibility to teach them about the Lord Jesus. It is nothing but an opportunity which God gives you to teach and talk to a person. I'm always looking for opportunities to tell people about the Lord Jesus. So if I have a conversation with a person long enough, I'm listening for information to find out how do I segue in to a conversation. On my job, there is a gentleman that's on my job, and he has um, he um, he has tattoos all over him, and that's okay because you see a lot of that. But he has six 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 written across his face, and so of course with me that says everything I need to know. You know, I'm sitting there, so I'm trying to figure out. We're in two different departments. I want to start a conversation, and I want to know why do we have six 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 written on his face? Do he knows what it means? These things I want to know for what purpose? Because I want to teach you more perfectly about the Lord Jesus. Because for somebody to put that on their face, you know what? They're angry at the Lord. Because people know what that stands for. If there's one thing they know, they know that is defiance towards God. Now, my question is, why are you mad at God? I promise you, I'm going to have that conversation. But I'm trying to figure out a way before you get into a person's life. you got to know a person. So I'm going to befriend the guy. He looks like something that will kill you. So my thing will be, it's okay. It's okay. If he looked like something that will kill you, well, I pray to God I look like something that will bring life. I mean, people look like their father. And so if the devil is his father, he should look like the devil. Because you listen, I listen just a distance off, listen to his conversation, listen to a few things, but I'm gathering data that I may be able to speak with him. And so what I want to do is people know that on the job, I am um, a preacher. They know I'm a pastor. And so they come to me with a lot of issues or questions or things. Many times it's funny. I'm trying to do my work, but people come to me and they, need, they want um, counseling or they want advice, if you will. And so my thing is I'm careful the advice that I give them, but I'm always pointing them to the Lord Jesus. So at the same time, I know I got to hustle with my work to make sure I'm rendering to Caesar what is Caesar, but I'm making sure I'm doing the Lord's business. Because at the end of the day, God is not going to care about how many machines I build. God do care about the souls we win. So you do have your job to do, but you're going to have to figure out a way to carry on the ministry that God has put in you. And that is as a Christian to be in a light that your light can shine before people. Yes, he said, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, but to God's what is God's. And sometimes Caesar and God is going to collide. Now the question is, are you able to obey God or Caesar? Well, it may cost me my job. Well, the earth is the Lord, the food is the earth, the world and everything in it. Don't you think God knows this is going to be a clash on your job? And that's what happens right there. So when, again, look at the chain reaction that took place. So you see Paul got out, immediately started working. And when he started working, he got bit. People began to watch him. They thought that he would die. He didn't die. They then tried to deify him. He didn't take the deification. And then he was um, um, 
if you would, because of the rock that the thing that took place, he was honored to go in to sit with the uh, the high person of the island, the the ruler of the island, which he got to know him for three days, talk with him, and begin to just tell him, I'm sure, about the goodness of Jesus. When Publius then began to tell him about his father and the situation, Paul didn't just talk about Jesus. He was able to show this by going and heal the man. And so by this being healed, the word then goes out and all of these people come with diseases and then Paul then used the word of God to heal them. Now, tell me something. Don't you think that is a segue in down that village or that community, wherever they was at, that they may know about the Lord Jesus? God is waiting for you to do what you're supposed to do so he can use you, that you can be a segue to people that they may get to know Jesus. And the devil don't stop. The thing he would try to do is to get you to climb up to be quiet and not talk about the Lord. But then when you break out of that shell of embarrassment or shame and you begin to talk about the Lord Jesus and God do a great work through you and deliver people and get them free. And they tell other people and other people come to tell you about Jesus. Don't you think these people now have a relationship that they get to know Jesus? That's what the whole thing is about, saints. God just want to use your hands. He want to use your mouth. He want to use your eyes. He want to use your ears. God want to use these things to reach people. That's the whole purpose of this. And so that's what was happening. So all of these people came with all their diseases and sick. They didn't even talk about how hard it was. They just came to somebody, somebody that can fix the problem. And that's what Paul said. Again, it says, and when this and when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. So they were healed, guys. And listen at this. Now, here's a very important thing that you have to learn here. So they were healed. And the people was very um, they showed their gratitude. They showed um how thankful they were. They showed how thankful they were. Look at verse number 10. It says who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they led us up, led us with such things as were necessary. So listen at now here. Here's what you got to focus in on right here, guys. Who also honored us with many honors. Who honored who? The people of the island honored Paul. And others. Well, what did they honor them with? He says, um, honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they led us up with such as were necessary. That is very important right there, saints. Such as was necessary. Now, let me show you what the problem is with this. Here's where you find out the difference between God God's hand moving or people, a person that is of God and that one is of the devil. Again, look at verse number nine. Now he already, now Paul has healed the father of Publius. Again, he then healed the people around. The people are so thankful that they honored him with many honors. Let me tell you something. There are certain, there there are people that go around with healing crusades with the purpose of trying to get many honors. He said they honored them with many honors. The honors is not the problem. Here's what the issue is. As the listen at you gotta see things, what is put in here. Everything you read is not on the paper, but you can understand it when you begin to understand. The text of a thing. Look at what it said. Who, on, who also honored us with many honors. And not only they gave them many honors. Which um, honors. And when we departed. Not only honored. When we departed. They lighted on us. Such as. Such things as were necessary. They didn't give you unnecessary things. You got some preachers that tell you that. I need a new Learjet. Why? So I can go spread the gospel over into another country. Well, it would be cheaper if we bought you an iPad because you can then FaceTime the people in the other country and you don't have to fly over there. No, but I need a jet to go see the people. They need to see me. Well, they do see you on the tablet. 
And so the point that I'm making to you is there are some people that do a thing because they want honors. They want you to bless them. Pound the pastor. Give them some money. Buy him a car. Let me lay things on him. Okay, I understand that you are very appreciative. And I, I don't have a problem with um, pastors and their anniversaries and the people decide that they want to give. Okay, that's your pastor. If God lays it on your heart that you want to give him, well, give it. I don't have a problem with that. But I can't have a birthday and then a pastor's anniversary. Then you got to get me for Christmas. Then I need you to get me for this is my anniversary. And then you got to get me also for, well, this is because um, my mama um, birthed me day. I don't know. It's just craziness. It's craziness that the people over and over again, that he said they gave them what was needed. So certain things you don't need. I don't need a, 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 a pair of shoes from a, um, I don't know, a, a pink polar bear. It's only one. So we killed them and we made some shoes for you. What is necessary for us to grow in Christ, saints? What is necessary? And so quit giving things. They gave the things that was necessary. I tell you what is necessary for your pastor. I tell you what is necessary for a preacher. Necessity is for you to pray for them. That's the necessity. For me, if you want to bless me, the way you can bless me tremendously is pray for me. Pray for me that God continue to give me guidance. Pray for me that God open my eyes to anything that I'm um, oblivious to. Uh, pray for me that God give me wisdom. Because what I want to do is continue blessing the people of God. I'm not doing a thing to get a thing. Because if I'm doing a thing to get a, to get a thing, then that goes, the devil knows, into the spirit of manipulation. Because I'm going to manipulate the moment in order to do a thing. So manipulation is as the sin of witchcraft. And we know that witchcraft is of the devil. So when a preacher or when these people beginning to now always looking for something from you, they're always looking for a word to give you so you can be excited, so you can give them something. I'm going to do this so I can get that. But God says, no, 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 that's not necessary, nor should it be. So if you do a thing and God bless the people, bless be God's name. You are set free. Spread the gospel. That's my thing. Spread the gospel. And I promise you, God will honor you and bless you tremendously from there. So that's what he did, guys. Paul began to bless them. And so they then got to moving. Got to, got to moving. And on this island, they said, um, and after... And we'll close here, guys. He says, and after three months, we departed in a ship to Alexandria, which had winter in the isle. So signed was, was Castors and Pollock. Who signed was Castors and Pollock. And so what you're saying is you had a, um, a um, ship, if you would, had docked there. Docked there. And it was heading to Alexandria. But it was a certain name to the ship, meaning a owner of the ship. I don't know. Again, I've never had the pleasure of cruising. I'm going to get that pleasure, guys. I promise you I'm going to get the cruise if the Lord's will and the creek don't rise. But you have different ships that you can get on when it comes to cruising. And they're going different places. The ship where they were going, where they needed to go, they was making the connection. With everything that they were going through, God will have you to make the connection to where you need to be. You just continue trusting God, saints. And remember, if God uses a person to do a thing for you, to help deliver you, remember this always. God is using the person. It is not the person, but it is God that is using the person. And if you so want to bless the person, that is okay. But remember, you are blessing them by saying thank you to them. I Meaning, however you choose to say thank you, but the blessing is that God used them. So you may be able to show your, um, show your gratitude by blessing them or whatever you choose to bless them with. But remember, you can't buy the blessing from them. That came from God. So you bless the person, but you give praises to God. If you find that way, saints, you'll find that the God will truly bless you and bring you through many, many things. We thank God for the time that we have had in the word. Father, I pray that you bless the saints, that they are able to take what has been proclaimed to them today and apply it to their lives, that they may surely grow, that they may be a living example of righteousness 
that you may use them to set people free. And also, Lord, that people may come to know about you. I, Lord, desire to have souls wrapped up for the name of Jesus, that I may be able to stand before you, Lord, on that great day of judgment and say, Lord, I did your will. I sowed the seeds of righteousness. And Lord, here are the souls I bring you. Father, I pray that you put that in all of the hearts of the saints, that we understand that we don't know who we're entertaining. So help us to be courteous to everyone that we come in contact with. Not knowing, Lord, that may be the very person that may take care of us when we need, Lord God, that thing that we're waiting for you on or looking for. Bless the saints, Lord, that we may continue to grow in you and through your will and in your word. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. I believe by, I believe by faith that you have already honored this request. For I ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let me ask. Are you one that's out there and you have heard the gospel preached today? And it has resonated with you. And you are saying, I'm okay with this. I think I want to be a part of what this Jesus is doing. So you want to give your life to Christ. If you are one who want to give your life to Christ, you do not know him as your Lord and Savior and never known him as your Lord and Savior. And you want to give your life to Christ. I have good news for you. I'm going to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Now, if you are one that once knew him and you turned and you walked away, and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, I want to walk you through God's plan of rededication. Just follow with me. Just, re just say, uh, repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that you have opened before me. I, Lord, by my own free will, choose to walk through this door by repenting of the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. If you, Jesus, will come into my life, I will serve you all the days of my life. I openly confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. I believe with my heart that God has raised him from the dead. I believe by faith, according to your word, I am now saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, if you would just let us know by putting that in the comment section, guys, we just want to celebrate with you. Now, you may ask the question, what do I do now that I have given my life to Christ or I rededicated my life to Christ? Well, you find you a good Bible, believe in church, and you sit down and learn about the goodness of God. You may say, well, I don't know about a good Bible, believe in church. This is new to me. Or I have been hurt. And right now, I just don't want to sit in the church. Okay, stay right here with us. And we'll continue teaching you the word of God until you're strengthened enough to where you know the word of God enough that you know when you're hearing falsehoods or truth. Or you have been healed enough that you can now go back in the presence of people. You say, okay, now, what do I need to do to be a member of Firm Foundation via online? Well, two things. One, I ask you this question. Do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, yeah, I believe it. I say, okay, but then you're halfway there. The next thing I want to know is, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulations of this ministry so as long as they line up with the word of God? You say, um, yeah, I'm willing to do that. And then I will say, well, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves people right where they are and will always work with them to try to get them what Christ wants them to be. Now, if you will put that in the comment section, we will celebrate that with you also. Now, you may say, look, I want to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? Well, we're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. We would love to see your face. Again, we are the shaky, handy, huggy type people. As a matter of fact, Saints, this week, this week at the, at the church, we're going to have our fall fellowship. So we invite you to come out. Come out, please. Come visit with us. This will be a good time to come. We're gonna, um, they're going to be doing some eating. We're going to have some, um, some things for kids, for trunk or treat. Fall festival. Fall festival. So what we're going to do, guys, is really enjoy some time. We would love to see you there. I would have more time to shake hands and talk to you. we got some you know, things that we're going to be doing, um, games that kids will be able to play. They can go around and get candy in a safe place. 
um, bouncy mats, that bouncy houses that they can jump around in. I don't know. We'll get a bonfire going. Whatever needs to be done. But we just enjoy one another's company. Guys, if you love, we would love to have you there. So if you would, this Sunday, this Sunday, 10 a.m. at the church. Matter of fact, Wednesday night Bible studies, 7 p.m. Sunday morning Bible, uh, Sunday morning um, worship service, 10. But we're in the church at 9 for Christian education. Now, if you were one to say, I want to um, help support the ministry, you can send it right there, guys. There's a QR code. You can send it or you can do um, send it snail mail via the same address. Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, 1851 Highway 66. I, I would assure you, we're going to use these things to the glory of God, to the kingdom of God. No shady business. We love you guys. We thank God for you. But if you can, this will be a great Sunday to come out to Firm Foundation because we can really have time to spend and get to know you guys, shake hands with you, and spend some time together. You'll be blessed in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you Sunday. If the Lord's will in the creek, don't rise. Be blessed, saints. We love you.